Welcome to Yacht Crew Vlogs, where we tell the stories of those in the yachting industry. A behind the scenes look that discovers the individuals in the industry, their history, their passions, and what inspires them to do what they do. Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria, I am your host, and today I'm really pleased to welcome the CEO of Excelling in Excellence, a boating reimagined charter company, Lindsay Robinson, welcome. Thank you so much. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah, well, you know what? You have, you're out of Chicago, Illinois, correct? <clears throat> yes, yes. I, um, I'm out of Chicago. Um, not born, but, that, but raised in Chicago on the south side. Now, yachting. Um, yeah, it's funny because it's just been recently for me that I realized there was actually a yachting industry in Chicago. I didn't realize that. I mean, Maryland and, you know, Fort Lauderdale, when you talk about the U.S., it's generally Fort Lauderdale that you speak about. Um, mm -hmm. But how did you get into yachting? So that's a good question. And I'm just getting my feet wet. So when you speak of the yachting industry, I'm just, I'm just learning that that exists. Um, so ever since I was little, like I've, I've loved the water. I've loved to swim. Um, when I discovered personal watercrafts like jet skis, I was like, yes, I love this. But it was always renting somebody else's jet ski. And then, we know, like in Chicago, we have, um, of course, like Michigan. And same thing, we will pay very often to get on somebody else's boat. Or we will go on the Michigan side, we will pay very often to get on, like to get on somebody else's boat. Um, and that's what we thought it was. We can rent somebody else's pontoon. We can rent somebody else's like powerboat and have a great time. And one day we were on like a smaller yacht. I'm still not very well versed in the different type or names of boats. But um, as we were on a boat, I'm asking questions about the business. And I'm like, wow, like I love this. I, I can do this. So often, so often, I have been given the perception of you got to have so much money. You got to have so much money. You know, that's not an industry for you. Just, you know, rent it for this astro astronomical amount of money, $700 an hour, $800 an hour. And we get our friends together and we split the cost. And it's like, yes, this is amazing. But nobody stopped to think that we, we can do this. We can be a part of this industry. And it was at that moment, actually just a few months ago, probably, I think it was June or July, just a few months ago, we were on the boat and they were like, well, before we take off, do you have any questions? And all of my friends are like, you know, put your hands down. You're wasting our time. We only have three hours. We only get this boat for three hours. And I raised my hand and I asked, well, how much does this boat cost? How much does it cost the maintenance? How much does it cost to pay the captain? I start asking questions that none of my friends ever thought to ask. And they're only worried about the three hours of time that we have. And I'm trying to let them know we can have this for three years, 30 years. Forget these minutes. The few minutes that it's going to take to get these answers could change our lifetime. And once I realized, like, yes, we can do this. Financially, we can do this. And then once I started asking those questions, that's when I realized it's a whole world out there. I didn't know. I didn't even know. Like six months ago, I didn't even know that there's a whole industry. I'm, I'm being honest. Like people live on boats. People cruise from Chicago, like down the Mississippi to Florida. I'm like, wait, all the boats are gone to Chicago. Where, where are they? And I just started doing research, like talking to um, Captain Kelly talking to um, a few other captains um, here in Chicago. It, it, it's a whole thing. I just started my first um, basic boating course, actually, just a few weeks ago. And I'm like, there's so much to learn. It's just so much to learn. It's, it's just phenomenal. And then, like you said, I'm like looking for pictures and looking for as advertisement to help get my like small boating business out there. And like you said, there's no one there's no one that looks like me. Even when you go to the Chicago playpen where everyone, to me, everyone is having an amazing time. You look around and there's, there's no one that looks like me. Even to find pictures to put up on my website. I mean, yeah, like I said, there's just, there's, there's no one that 
that looks like me or appeals to like where I came from. Well, and that's the thing that I find really interesting is that, you know, I, I have had the pleasure of talking to um, another uh, yacht charter company owner, Sheila Ruffin, um, SoCal Caribbean uh, yacht charter. And she was saying the same things. When it came to finding images uh, in order to promote her company, when it came to speaking to friends in her social circle, um, and she's a Washington DC lawyer. So of course we're talking, you know, at least upper middle class here, the kind of people that yeah. can afford to charter yachts. Yeah. Um, there, most of her friends didn't realize that that was an option to yacht <coughs> charter or to buy your own yacht. Um, and, you know, that's something that we are sitting here in 2020. What is wrong with the world? I mean, you know, right. it, it's equality and diversity. One of the things that I want to tell the audience out there on your website, uh, one of the quotes you have is regardless, you want people to experience the water regardless of race, class, ethnicity, and that they can experience the love of water. And I love that because that's exactly, you know, it shouldn't matter. Why is it always, you know, 20 year old blonde women with 40, 50, 60 year old, you know, white men. Um, it's like you said, you love the water. You know, you and your friends, you've been buying, renting all sorts of water toys for so long, but mm -hmm. none of you actually realized that the, the, the concept for you was possible in every mm -hmm. way. Right, right, right. And for you as well, uh, you know, you come from an educator's background. Yes. Um, so I can speak on that, like, just a little bit. Like, I, I know a lot about, like, educa education and educating scholars. And like you said, for the most part, we, my family and I, in this generation, have done, like, very well for, for ourselves. Myself, I'm a superintendent of a small charter school. Uh, my husband is in the management industry as well. And we have four small kids. So we're in the this place of, yes, we're doing better within this generation. But then, like you said, when you think about, like, stress and reducing stress, to me, that that's part of that is like boating in the boating industry. And again, if I think, let me try to um, articulate this well. I think if people like me coming from the lower class to the upper middle class could also find ways to reduce the stress and get in different industries, that's going to make us feel better and do even more of those things that we really love. Like just that exhilarating feeling of sitting on the front of the boat as it's zooming through the water. To me, it's not it's not just about fun it's a it's about reducing stress it's about relaxing those things that we need to get outside of this norm of this day to day the rat race the hustle and bustle it's so much more and i work with a lot of um teachers um of course again to me very very high stress industry and not only do i want to open the doors for like people that look like me african americans people that grew up in poverty also my educators my teachers with the amount of money that they make again there's this this concept this misconception of that can't be me that can't be my industry even as like i target them i don't know if you saw on the website for educators it's 50 percent off always all the time this because i'm trying to target them so they can also understand this is something that you can be a part of it's amazing like you said to just sit back relax have somebody else like serve you um you could be a part of that world as well and i know I, i've said a lot and i think i've kind of gotten a little bit off topic but just to open up those doors and that's why it's called excelling excellence Boating reimagine, re reimagine what boating could look like. Like we see what it looks like right now, but we just need to open those doors and reimagine. It is a place for you. It's a place for everyone. Another little side. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. I was just going to ask you, why do you think that people that look like you, African Americans, don't even realize that this is a possibility? Wow, that's a, that's an amazing question. Um, I know, I think I mentioned it. Just like even as I'm looking for like um, photos on the internet and just different ways to like do my basic marketing and like reach out to people that look like me, I can't even find photos on the internet. 
of African American people on boats. So I think that's one big thing. Like when we don't see people that look like us doing that, we think that that's not necessarily like for us. Like we don't hear it advertised on like the radio stations that we listen to, the the shows that we watch. That's not what's popping up, you know, in the in the middle of the show. So you know, we we go and we're geared towards what we see, and that that's not necessarily what we see. And it's not that we don't enjoy it or we wouldn't like it. It's just you don't know what you don't know. So if we don't know, how can we ever be a part of that industry? Well, after this last year that we've seen in 2020, of course, you know, we hear a lot of people saying that, well, not in the States, mind you, the States, they've seen a booming year in yachting in 2020. Yeah. Um, but in, in Europe, we have seen a sort of a downturn. Do you think that part of the reason that they are missing out is because they have not discovered this huge market out there that currently exists, but they're just not tapping it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely think that um, that that they haven't discovered. It. We haven't discovered it. Like I said, if we're so focused on when we when we do get our like foot in the door, if we're so focused on, I can't waste a minute of the three hours that I have. I can't waste a minute of the one hour that I book. We just don't stop to ask the questions. We live in this one moment when we don't think past the moment and how much grander or bigger the outcome could be just when we ask the questions and then like we were talking about people have to be willing to to share and open up and like let people know yes you can be a part of this industry and that is one thing that I found I'm so blessed to have found the one time um recently when I did do the charter it was a young um female captain and as I was walking away, I told myself, I said, get her contact information. And I surely did. And I reached out. I just jumped out on the limb. I said, hey, you know, I want to know more. Do you mind talking to me? And she was so open and willing to sit down with me. And we had lunch and we had a small conversation. And that opened the door. And not everyone is willing to talk and open up and share everything. But she was. And I'm definitely so happy for that same thing. I reached out to um, Captain Kelly. And she was so open and willing to share. But again, we can't get into industry if we don't know the information and we don't even know the questions to ask. I set up this lunch with this female, with this captain, and I didn't even know where to start. I didn't even know the questions to ask, except how much does a boat cost? And then we just kind of went, we just kind of went from there. So where do you plan on starting? Like, I, I mean, obviously you've got your site up and running. <laughs> um, can you, you know, are you just going to be the Chicago, <laughs> Illinois area or are you planning on, getting bigger and bigger and bigger as time goes on and offering all sorts of experiences? Great question. So I don't have a super long-term plan. Um, right now I plan to be um, in Chicago um, and potentially go across to the Michigan side. And as I develop my marketing, as I develop um, the business, I'm definitely hoping, you know, to get bigger and branch out. But again, there's just so much more information um, that I need. For example, I have a friend in Dallas, and I'm like, well, in the, in the wintertime, we could just move down there. What is the boating industry like in Dallas? And I mentioned that to somebody, and they're like, no, don't do Dallas, do Florida. And then they were telling me about how much it costs to get the boat from Chicago to Florida in the summertime. So the more information that I have, I'm definitely willing and I want to move forward and branch out. Um, right now, my plan is just one boat, um, but I'm hoping eventually to have to have more. I'm just so excited to discover, again, what the industry has. And the more information that I can find, um, that would definitely be helpful. Now, are you going to hire a crew or are you going <clears> to <throat> go through and become a captain yourself? <laughs> so... I, I am definitely going to become a captain myself, but my number one priority is definitely safety. So I want to make sure that at least in the beginning, I'm putting the best captains out there with the people that um, rip my boat. So I'm definitely, I'm going to go through the course and become a captain just so I can have all of the knowledge 
that I need, you know? Like, I can't make it the best experience uh, for the people that rent my boat if I don't have, like, all the knowledge and know everything. So I'm definitely, I'm going to hire a crew, but I'm going to go through the, um, all of the courses and gain all the knowledge for myself as well. That's amazing. You know what? I wish you the absolute best of luck. And I would really love to have you back, perhaps, from your boat. Oh, absolutely. I would love that so much. <laughs> I'm not sure if you could get a, the one biggest thing that we find with, with any marina around, well, anywhere in Europe anyways, is that, well, in Fort Lauderdale too, internet is very difficult to come by when you hit, hit a marina, that's for sure. But uh, I would love to have you back. And you know what? I wish you all the best of luck. Um, and if people are wanting to get a hold of you and are going to, once the borders open up, are willing to come into the States and want to do a, a yacht charter in Chicago, um, we'll make sure to have the, inter, uh, the website down below this interview, uh, as well as your email um, and all the ways to contact you. You're on Facebook and Instagram as well? Yes, yes. Excelling and excellent. Excellent. Well, once again, this has been CEO Lindsay Robinson of Excelling in Excellence, Boating Reimagined. Um, and I, I wish you the absolute best. And I'm, I'm really excited to see where this takes you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on. It was a pleasure. You've been watching another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Rhea. I have been your host. Please tune in again for another episode.